It's amazing the things that are happening in the universe. Things that are completely beyond our imagination. There are so many things that we don't understand but are discovering each day. The universe is such a strange place that it's almost okay to wonder if it's real or not. Ready to join the Americano team? Then make sure to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of our interesting videos ever again. That being said, let's begin. Shocking images of monster black holes super powerful jet ripping a star apart. When it comes to taking a look at some of the strange things in the universe, it's not surprising that with new technology that we have, we're starting to capture incredible images of things that we haven't been able to see before. Black holes are an incredible phenomenon that we're just barely starting to understand. And for the first time ever, astronomers have been able to capture images of the formation and evolution of a giant black hole as it devours a star. The jet particles that the black hole spits out have 125 billion times more energy than our sun. The explosion was incredible, and scientists observed the explosive event which took over a decade to unfold. What the scientists saw was the complete and utter destruction of a star, which was anywhere from two to seven times the mass of our own sun. For your information, most galaxies have giant black holes in the center, which are a million times the mass of the Sun. Asteroid passing close to Earth could contain 5.4 trillion dollars of precious metals. We know that there are a lot of precious metals on the Earth, but what about an asteroid that's flying past the Earth? Asteroid mining has been thought of for decades, ever since we could get into space. In fact, the potential of asteroid mining is somewhere in the trillions of dollars. And in July of 2015, there was an asteroid that was worth five trillion dollars and mostly made up of platinum, which zoomed by the Earth. Imagine being able to pull something like that to the planet and mine all of that platinum from it. Currently, there are plans to create such vessels that would go to other planets or even land on asteroids and mine the precious metals from them. There have been other asteroids that have passed our planet that have been made out of gold and even diamonds. Once the mining industry figures out how to mine asteroids, it'll be a very exciting time for humans. Especially those doing the mining and the money collecting from the mining. A planet made of diamonds. Diamonds are known as one of the most precious materials on the planet, next to gold. However, diamonds on our planet are rare. But if you look to the Cancer constellation, which is not far from our solar system, there's a star-scorched planet there that is almost completely made of diamonds. That's right, an entire planet made of diamonds. The surface of this planet is covered in dark graphite, and diamonds are pushing through the surface of this graphite. It's estimated that just below the planet's surface, there's a very thick layer of diamonds. However, it may be tricky to mine such a place, assuming we could even get to it. The planet's surface temperature is 2,150 degrees Celsius, and it's a permanent diamond barbecue. Researchers are now hoping they can get a better look at the planet in the future as telescopes become better to get a better idea of what the giant diamond planet really looks like. Milky Way cloud that smells like rum tastes like raspberries. It's a weird question, but have you ever wondered what the center of the galaxy smells like? Well, depending on your preference, the answer could either be raspberries or rum. As ridiculous as that sounds, this discovery was made when astronomers used the IRAM radio telescope in Spain to study a gas cloud called Sagittarius B2, which is near the center of the galaxy. Chemical signals were sent back and found ethyl formate, which is a dominant flavor in raspberries and also in rum. Okay, so before everybody gets their spaceships ready for a giant berry-picking space voyage, ethyl formate does happen to give raspberries their flavor, but there are many other molecules that are needed to make space raspberries. The other thing is that the smell is hardly pure, and there were actually 4,000 distinct signals in Sagittarius B. Or it could mean 1,001 flavors if you wanted to translate the chemicals into food. Try telling people that the Milky Way tastes like raspberries, see the reactions you get. This planet rains glass and has winds that blow seven times the speed of sound. 
In the early 90s, the Voyager 2 space probe was already out past Neptune and on its way towards the edge of our solar system. The Voyager swiveled its camera around to look back at our home world. It was difficult to see from where it was, but it was there, nearly 3 million miles away. Our entire planet was nothing more than a tiny blue dot against the background of stars. But there's another pale blue dot, which orbits a star that's 60 light years from Earth. The planet is a giant gas planet, much like Jupiter. However, it's much hotter in temperatures that can reach 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. But that's not all. There are rainstorms of glass and winds that can reach speeds above 4,000 miles per hour. It definitely wouldn't be a hospitable place to hang out, but if you could see what the surface of that planet looked like, it would be nothing short of incredible. The reason for the planet's incredibly high temperatures is because it's very close to its star. This planet has flaming hot ice. If you thought that a planet that's raining glass and has high 4,000 mile per hour winds was cool, what about our planet with flaming hot ice? There's a planet out there somewhere in a galaxy far, far away called Gliese 436b, or as it's otherwise known, the planet of burning ice. It's a smaller exoplanet with a mass that's quite close to that of Neptune and is also located very close to its parent star. The surface of the planet is about 439 degrees Celsius and the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So how does a planet like this have flaming hot ice? There's a certain form of ice that exists only on Gliese 436b that keeps solid because of the massive gravitational force that originates from the planet's core. Just like carbon turns into diamond when exposed to massive amounts of pressure and high temperature, the water on Gliese 436b turns into burning ice. This definitely makes it one of the most fascinating heavenly bodies in our universe. Kepler found an exoplanet that could have a lava ocean. NASA's discovering new planets every day, and in 2011, they discovered something rather unusual when it comes to planets. It's a scorched world, about 40% larger than the Earth, and around 4.6 times as massive, which makes it about as dense as Mercury. But it's really hot, and orbits its sun every 20 hours, but only at a distance of 1 20th that of our own Mercury from the sun. This exoplanet is called Kepler-10b and is part of 500 new exoplanets recently discovered. The incredible thing is that none of these exoplanets are like the others, and this new planet some are calling a planetary missing link between hot giants and Earth-like planets that are habitable. Hubble detects exoplanet with glowing water atmosphere. The search for exoplanets has turned up some really interesting planets that have incredibly bizarre surfaces, such as the planet that rains glass and the burning ice planet. Recently, scientists discovered water molecules glowing around a planet outside of our solar system. This would mean that the exoplanet actually has a stratosphere. It turns out that's a giant find and can help scientists figure out a lot more about gas giants such as Jupiter. This glowing exoplanet is called WASP-121b and is located about 900 light years from the Earth. However, the planet doesn't support life because of its scorching environment. But it's still cool to know that there's a planet out there with a glowing water atmosphere. The mysterious hexagon on Saturn's North Pole. Saturn's been showing us some really interesting things. One of these things is the mystery of why we can see a hexagon at Saturn's North Pole. The interesting thing is that astronomers don't know what's causing this hexagon shape to appear. The hexagon actually appeared out of thin air in two different regions. The hexagon spans a range of several hundred miles and is thought to be a towering structure of clouds layered on top of each other. The hexagon features six perfectly geometrical edges which make up the hexagon. UFO hunters believe that this hexagon was artificially raised by some ancient civilization, but they'll probably disappoint it when they find out it's actually a weird or bizarre polar vortex. But here's the thing, the hexagon's shape baffles scientists because it shows there are discrepancies between how the North and South Poles behave. This would mean that the poles must move in some opposition to each other, as if wobbling. Whatever the explanation, the photographs sent back by Cassini are beautiful and incredible.
two stars crash into each other, wobbling the universe and flinging out huge amounts of gold. There have been incredible discoveries of late when it comes to the universe, and a recent discovery actually opened up a new chapter in astrophysics. Astronomers and scientists have been able to see things that nobody else has been able to see before, such as two stars that slammed into each other in deep space. The two super-dense stars collided together 130 million light-years away. The collision is said to have spit out tons of precious metals and other heavy elements such as platinum and uranium. The event confirmed theories about the origin of these mysterious neutron stars. The explosion was so great that it rocked the very fabric of the universe and distorted space-time. The collision sent gravitational waves towards the Earth and it was only the fifth time that the Earth has felt such waves. Neutron stars are the burned out remnants of giant stars. These stars are so dense that a teaspoon of their material on Earth would weigh a billion tons. The interesting thing is that the two objects were about 12 miles in diameter and stretched and distorted space-time as they spiraled towards each other and then collided with an incredible impact. The gravitational waves spread out across the universe at the speed of light, and LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, picked them up. Just two seconds after this burst of gamma rays from the neutron star collision was captured by NASA's Fermi Space Telescope. The neat thing is that things play out towards us in what seems like slow motion, and astronomers were able to turn their telescopes and their dishes towards the small spot in the southern sky where it could be seen and saw the flash across both the visible and invisible light spectrums. A once-in-a-lifetime universal fireworks show. Exit stage left. The most obvious and catastrophic disaster would occur if the Earth suddenly stopped spinning as opposed to a gradual slowing down of its rotation. Remember that even when you're sitting still, relative to the cosmos, you're booking faster than a race car. The planet spins at a rotational velocity of over 1,500 kilometers per hour, so if that stopped suddenly, everything on the Earth's surface would be thrown sideways at fantastic speed. Buildings would collapse and almost everyone would die. But objects light enough to be thrown into the air would remain largely at rest relative to each other. What does that mean? Well, if you were sitting in a lawn chair on a hilltop, you'd have a pretty interesting seated ride for a moment before the G-force knocked you out with your beer still clinging to its cup holder. The rest of you are finished. If the ceasing of the Earth's rotation was sudden, one of the only ways to avoid the supersonic sideways blast would be to stay underground in a hardened bunker. Of course, this survival solution presumes that you know in advance when the day is coming. Scientist Randall Monroe recommends Helsinki, Finland as a potential survivalist's haven if our planetary spin sputters to a stop. Helsinki comes with a vast underground network of tunnels and resources, including a shopping mall. But it might get crowded in there, so book your spot early. Pole Position Not everyone on the surface of the Earth would die. Monroe also points out that the North and South Poles would be immune to the effects of the thousand mile per hour winds. The closer to the equator an object began, the more likely it would be to get demolished, but everything at the poles would survive intact. The dozens of scientists and staff at the Amundsen-Scott Research Base in Antarctica would notice that the radios were only getting static from all the major continents below the Arctic Circle. When resident astronomers noticed that the Earth was no longer spinning, the scientists would reach the horrifying conclusion that most of the living world had been thrown headlong to its doom. Even the thing would be screwed out of a population to conquer. Stuck in Antarctica fighting Kurt Russell for eternity? That is one icy burn. Air Supply The stopping of the Earth's spin would play havoc with the air, leading to global storms and turbulence. Normally, the heat created by wind is negligible due to the relatively low amount of kinetic energy produced, but a 1,500 kilometer per hour wind? That's gonna generate some fire. 
The cold of the ocean would clash with superheated air, creating a type of weather never before seen on Earth. A mix of wind, spray, fog, and rapid temperature changes. The ocean would become so unsettled that its surface would be impossible to locate exactly. Survivors wouldn't be able to tell where the stormy mist ended and the water began. Magnets, how do they work? The hellish cataclysms of numbers 5 through 2 would kill most of the people and animals on Earth, but even if the planet slowed gradually to a stop and gave everyone ample warning, we would still have gigantic problems to deal with. If the Earth didn't spin, its magnetic field would no longer be regenerated and would decay to a very low residual force. The northern lights would disappear, and the Van Allen radiation belts would vanish. Worse yet, so would our protection from cosmic rays and other high-energy particles. That would create a biohazard that would make the Chernobyl meltdown seem like a mildew attack. 